Okay, so I'm just going to look at uh, exercise three. Well, which you can see is this conference room. And so it's probably something you can draw fairly easily by now, but it's a good chance to look at things like um, making your own blocks, which isn't in the notes, but I'll give you some examples of that. So in the notes here for exercise three, it tells you how to do everything you need to do to create the drawing. Um, and uh, use the array tool to, to copy those um, tables and chairs and then um, drawing the text and line types you've got the basic steps there but again I'll give you some pointers on that to get the scale to work properly so I'm just going to roughly follow these steps but I'll do things a little bit differently and maybe give you some easier ways of doing things as well So with the um, the drawing here, uh, also the uh, start file here, if we go to templates, you can see you just have the standard list of templates that are preloaded with AutoCAD. I don't want to use any of those, because remember we've made by now our own template. And so to start using that, you need to go to the main menu and choose new. So that's really important. If you want to use your own template file, until you know how to put it into that list, just go to the main menu, choose new, and then you can browse anywhere to choose a template from any location. So there's the template file I've created. And if you're still worried about making your own template, don't be any file that you have you can use to make a template to begin with. As you improve things later, you can update the template file with your new settings. So the most important thing though is to make sure you've used the metric template to start your template. So if you don't see the, or sorry, if you see anything other than these metric scales, if you see the imperial scales as well, You've used the wrong template. You've used uh, ACAD instead of ACAD ISO, and you shouldn't use that as the basis for a template. So make sure you use uh, ACAD ISO if you're if you still haven't made your own template. Start with ACAD ISO, and then add the uh, things you want to that file and create a template with that. And a nice thing to have in your template is a layout set up with the title block already inserted. So I already have that there and I can just modify it as I create new drawings. But at first I'm just going to focus on the actual uh, drawing of the plan. Got to think a little bit about the drawing setup though before you do it. Uh, and so with um, this uh, boardroom is a fairly simple layout, it's basically a square, so um, I'm going to change to my wall layer and draw a rectangle just by clicking roughly in the area I can see. It's good to be close to the origin if you're not sure where to start. So I've got the XY origin down here, I'm just going to click near that origin point and we want it to be 8000, 8000. store this down so I can see the drawing and, and so remember that's an internal measurement and the wall thickness isn't on the drawing so you'll need to get that from the notes and it will tell you here somewhere it's going to be either 100 or 110 100, yep, okay. So it's all right. we've got 110 for the return, so it's probably meant to be brick, but uh, but then they said make it 100, so we'll just go with that, so that's good. And uh, so here we'll just offset 100 more. And now notice I can see my line weights, but when I'm zoomed out, they're going to be fairly heavy. Zooming in, they'll 
seem lighter. Uh, and that's because the line weight's staying the same thickness, but as I zoom out, obviously my lines are getting smaller. So relative to my lines, the line weight is bigger or smaller, which is that basic principle of scale. So if it's getting in the way, you can just disable the line weight option, which is good to remember. So that's a toggle that just shows the, uh, the line weights in the viewport. You don't need to leave that on all the time. And quite often it's good to have that turned off while you're drawing. Most experienced uh, users of AutoCAD will have it turned off most of the time. And uh, so the first thing I'm going to put in there is the door. Now in the notes you'll see it gives you a really uh, complicated method, I think, to create a break in the opening here. So I'm going to show you how I'd do it. It's a bit different. So they're showing you that you can use the break command, uh, which is here, either break at point or break to create a, um, an opening. That works, but you've got to use the from option and, and it's a bit of a long-winded method. So again, I'm going to show you a couple, two different ways which are both, I think, easier than, than that method. I'm going to draw with the line tool and I'm going to hover over the corner, move my mouse to the left so that it's got a dashed line coming from that corner point. So all I've done is click on the line tool and then hover over the point I want. Now with that dashed line coming to the left at 180 degrees I'll type in 110, enter and that will give me a line I can see that starts 110 from that corner and I can bring it down perpendicular to the outside. And then I could offset 900 mil. So basically the difference here is that I'm drawing these lines first before trying to break the main wall. Because now that I've got those lines I can use trim, press enter and then just choose the things I want to take away. So that's one way. Another way, undo that. So to use that method you need to be comfortable with object tracking and that takes a bit of getting used to so an even easier way is to draw a line from this corner straight down perpendicular to the outside and then offset away so offset 110 from there and then again offset 900 to get the opening size and then just come back and delete that first line and you've achieved the same thing. And honestly that's how most people who've used AutoCAD for a long time would do it. So um, either way it's easier than using break and all those different options. Uh, so then we've got the um, I think it's meant to be like a DS so uh, or a lectern somewhere that people would come up and talk and and lecture to the room. Uh, and uh, so it's got to be a thousand from each edge. And I don't know if anyone's worked out how to do this one, but it's not maybe as easy as you might think. So the easiest way is to offset the wall line. So sure you can guess. A thousand. So by choosing this inner edge, it's all one shape, so I can just click there, click to the right, and I've got a line there, a temporary line that this square needs to line up with. And so and so the secret here is just trying not to do everything at once. So just achieve the things you, you know how to do. So you know how to set out by a thousand from each of those walls using offset, I'm sure you can all do that. And then now I can draw a rectangle that's 500 by 500, in other words a square, but we're using the rectangle tool. I'm just going to click anywhere. Start drawing it. Difficult to get it right without drawing it somewhere else 
to start. So I'm going to just type in the size, 500, 500. So I've got this BS or lectern the right size. Now I'm going to select it and rotate it. So that's another thing I know you can all do, just using rotate. And I'm going to click anywhere for the base point. It'll rotate around and I'll type in 45. So now comes the part that's maybe not so obvious. You can select that now and use move. Snap to one of the corners and move it perpendicular to that line that I've set out and then use move again and this time pick it up on this corner and snap that over to line up with this line. So now we know that each of those corners is exactly a metre from the wall and we can delete that temporary line. So I'll put the dimensions in afterwards to check that measurement but I know that it's right anyway. So, then we have some uh, elements that need to be shown with dashed lines. I also need to put this one onto the, the furniture layer anyway. And so I've got a, a furniture dashed layer. But if you look in layer properties, you'll see it's not set to the dashed line type, it's hidden too. Because the dashed line type is often going to give you dashes that are too big. So you have other different kinds of dashed lines like hidden. Hidden is basically half the size of dashed. And then hidden too is half that again. So that should work if I draw a rectangle so it's 40 by, by 2400 and again set out from the uh, edge of this wall. So I'm going to again offset 100 mil from the wall line and then draw a rectangle anywhere on that line the new line that I've just created and then type in the size I want 2400 by 40 mil and then you can see here that this board needs to be centered from the line of the door to the corner of the wall so I'll delete my construction line and now I can just draw a new line from the midpoint of the line of the wall. Just take it straight up. And then I can select my rectangle. This is basically a whiteboard, but it's um, set out from the wall. That's, that's normal. Oh, it's probably actually, sorry, it's not a whiteboard. It's a projector, projector screen. And so then using move, I can snap to the midpoint of that rectangle and take it over perpendicular to that new line of drawing. And then again. Uh, because I... Yeah, yeah, so that's right. So that means, the CL means it's the centre of the wall. Yeah. Or the centre line of the, both actually, the wall and the projector. So, uh, and so again, then we've got the, uh, the projector uh, set out from there. So it's 2400, and we don't have a size for that, I don't think, but in the notes, it will. What does it say? I haven't even read that part. Here we go, 500 by 5. Oh no, so that's... So I'm sure it would be in here. Has anyone drawn the projector? Uh, 
Okay, I'll just make it 500 by 500. I think that's that looks like the size. So we've got a uh, a rectangle already drawn that's that size. But it's probably just as easy to draw a new one. Again, just by clicking anywhere, I can type in um, 500, comma 500. So I could have used that line that I had a moment ago, but I'll show you just another way. Selecting this rectangle, I can use Move, snap to the midpoint on the base, and then snap it to the midpoint on the wall. And now I can select it again and use Move, and just click anywhere for the base point this time. Move it to 90 degrees from there, and type in 2400, which puts it to the right place. And again, I'll draw the dimensions in a moment just to make all that. So, uh, oh, so sorry, two six four. Yes, I thought I just read twenty four hundred. Yep, so that's right. So it's got another go, another two uh, forty. There you go. Uh, and so. Uh, I'll do the block for the door, and so the main thing I want to show you is how to make your own blocks. And so here we can go to insert, and because I've loaded this door into my template, I can just choose it in the list there. Otherwise, we'd have to go to more options to browse for it. But I'll just choose it from here, and now I can place it in my opening, and it's the right size, of course. Uh, I'm going to make sure that door is on the correct layer as well. A door. And then now I want to make my own block. So I've got the block for the door and we've got these furniture pieces which are all the same size. So I'll draw the first one in the correct position and you're given that measurement, so it's 300 across and 3,000 up from the base. So again, just like a lot of things I've been doing, you can draw construction lines. So I might just change to the furniture layer, and then I'm going to draw a line from this corner and type in 300, comma. So that's going to draw a diagonal line which has come across 300 and then up 3000. So that will locate the corner of this desk. So that's a really good method. You don't always need to have horizontal and vertical lines. And again, you could use from or object tracking to achieve the same thing, but it doesn't hurt just to draw in a temporary line help you with these things. And remember when AutoCAD started you didn't have options like from or object tracking and you had to do everything with construction lines and I think in, in a lot of ways that was better. So uh, okay, so going back here it has the size for the um, table that's on the drawing as well. But you can see here so 1500 by 700 and it's on the drawing as well I'm sure yet yeah, 1500 by 700 so that's fairly easy. Um, this endpoint, 1500, comma 700. Now the chair, five hundred by six hundred. And yeah, so they're giving you a few different examples here using the tab key, which is useful, but again, sometimes it's a long winded way of doing it. So I'm going to show you some slightly easier ways. 
So again, just drawing a rectangle and you can see there it's giving me the, uh, the midpoint of the, uh, the rectangle there and we know that this chair is 500 across so it's going to be 250 mil to the left of that and then we want it to be 100 mil um, again from the table so now I know everything I need to so I'm going to just move the cursor away and type in uh, minus 250 comma uh, 100 uh, that didn't work, so I decided to go lost my tracking point, so I'll just do that again. Okay, so again, as long as it's tracking, there we go, that should do it. Minus 250, comma 100. No, it doesn't want to do it, and that's because it's sometimes hard to get that tracking point to come up uh, when it wants to go at an angle. So here, it's good to use that from option, but you might have found that when you type in FR, that it's going to give you an error um, instead of using from. So to force it you can right click uh, with shift. I'll just show you that again. So you can again start a command like rectangle. You can always type FROM. It's another way. And that will make it use from. But if you remember that, that method, shift and then right click. And that brings up this extra menu that you can't get to otherwise. And you'll see then that, uh, okay, so just one more time. So when you right click normally, it gives you a different menu. But if you right click with shift, again, you get this special utility menu which has some really useful options. Now it's got all the object snap options and some other really good things as well. And so there you can choose from. And so then I can click onto the base point that I want to measure from and type minus 250 comma 100 and I know it's setting out why isn't it going from there? So, uh, so there's another option that we probably need to use. So I'm just in the habit of using um, dynamic input, but we'll uh, okay, just do that one more time. So shift, right click, from, clicking there, and then here you have to use at, I think, to uh, make it register. So remember right back at the beginning we looked at using at to make things relative. So minus 250, comma 100, and there we are now finally it's measuring from that, that center point. So now I should be able to type in without using at from now on and there's the uh, basic shape for the uh, for the chair right, so then looking at the drawing you can see it needs to have a, uh, a backrest that's 50 mil and again you can use the tab option to select lines within the polyline but I think at this point it would be easier just to explode it and then you can easily offset that line 50 and then again offset the outside edges 50 to each side draw a line from the midpoint across to the left on each side also oh, yeah and, and across to the right as well and then fill it uh, and make sure that the radius is set to zero to just connect all those lines Now I think maybe, 
Oh yeah, so that should have been 300 for the arm length, and mine is a bit short, but that's easy to fix. So there, my arm is... How did it end up being that? That's a bit odd. 550. Oh, that's more like it. So, yeah, so 300, 250, right? So I've gone 300 from here, and I should have gone 300 from the top. Not a problem, because using stretch now, and this is a good command to know, um, probably even more useful than, than break. So with stretch, you can just make a window over those... Um, lines at the bottom of the armrest that I want to come down. Enter. I'm going to click a base point in the middle, take it in a straight line down from there, and then type 50, and enter. And now I've got the chair the right size. So that's done. I can delete this construction line now, and I've got everything I need for my block. So really, this is the new thing that isn't in the notes that I want to show you, how easy it is to make a block. I've shown you briefly before, but just want to make sure you have a chance to try this. So the first step is to select everything you want using grips. So in other words, make sure no other commands are running by pressing escape. And then under the block panel on your home tab, you can click on create. And it will select all of the objects you've chosen. So you can then give a name, and that's going to be uh, desk and chair. Uh, and then make sure you choose pick point, and choose a base point. So I'm going to use the corner of the desk there. And then just click OK. So then now, if I select it, you can see it all comes up as one thing. OK, so you can see here it tells you that you can, uh, well, type in rectangular array. That won't work. But you can type array rect. Or you can go to the uh, modify panel and just go to Array and choose Rectangular. And so let's look in the drawing and see it is um, 1300 between the desk units. But remember we've got to include the desk size as well. So that will make it 2000 uh, in the, the row distance. Okay, so the column spacing, uh, so the uh, row spacing is going to be 2,000. And we only have two of them. So two rows for the row count. And then for the row count, so the uh, column count, I mean, uh, we have three. And then the spacing, again, between them is 1,400, but we have to include, include the desk size as well. So that makes it 2,900 for the row spacing. Don't know why that isn't changing. Right, 2,900. And, and again, we need so just three there. There we go. So I'm just going to check that visually so that looks looks right to me. Just make sure it's all right. Yep, that looks good. Okay, so then we can close the array and then complete it. So don't worry if you make a mistake because you can easily select that and then you get those properties up again and you can adjust it. You'll see later it's often easy just to stretch with the arrows to change those those sizes or the count as well. So the arrow there changes the count, this arrow changes the spacing, and it's a really good intuitive tool that you can use now to just make adjustments like that. 
as you go, so you can easily add more objects to the array and remove them. So that's a really useful option. So I've got uh, basically all the elements that I need drawn, but I'm going to add something that again isn't in the notes. I'm going to use an, an extra layer for the hatch. And this is just good practice uh, as well as a wall layer before even using a separate layer for your internal and your external walls it's really helpful to have a layer for the hatch within your wall and so that it stands out I'm just going to make it a different colour to the wall itself and I'm just going to make the line type uh, the line weight default and then uh, because it's solid hatch it won't really matter as long as it's not a heavy line weight I'm going to make it current and then I'm going to draw a hatch making sure that the pattern is set to solid not one of these others some of the others will look solid, but that's just your scale. So you need to make sure you choose solid for the pattern. And now I can choose in between the lines. Again, so it's really important that you don't get the wrong thing. Okay, because it's important now to be able to turn that hatch off. I'll come back and do so I can easily check to see if I can turn that on and off easily because uh, often you want to disable the hatch or have it hidden uh, and so now I just want to draw some text and dimensions so remember with this template I do have a uh, dimension style set up and I've used annotative now the one you, you've used may have a scale instead of annotative it might be set to 50 here either way it'll work for this drawing because it's 1 to 50 but you will need a dimension style created already uh, and so then to draw in dimensions you can do it like they're shown here or you can draw them uh, a little bit more cleanly if you place them outside like this so it's always good practice if you can get the dimensions to be outside of your drawing area so outside of the plan then people don't mistake it for a building element now this lectern um, would need to be dimensioned with a line instead of linear and that one probably needs to go uh, in the drawing it's difficult to place that anywhere else so sometimes you can't avoid it but uh, if you can avoid it then it's, it's neater to place them outside uh, so so again here the um, the projector screen I can dimension the width and place that uh, outside if possible but again it's maybe not all that clear if I have to place it this far down I can try so actually if I can get it to line up with this one maybe that's not so bad but the little dimensions that you have on the side again will be clearer if they're in the plan so just going this way now there you can see that my text is coming up outside the dimension and so there's an option you can adjust in your dimension style oh sorry that's my text sorry 
so new dimension style. Uh, you can choose for the text placement on the fit tab to make it over dimension line with leader. So that will place it outside of the dimension and then allow you to adjust the text position separately for each one, which I think makes it clearer most of the time. You can also check the option for the text orientation. So uh, under text, and then you can check to have the text alignment always horizontal, which again uh, can sometimes make things clearer. So here you can see now the text is uh, obviously horizontal and I can keep adjusting that position just by selecting it with the grips. So it's up to you, personal preference really, but uh, that's sometimes a bit clearer. Or maybe this one could come maybe up here and fit just below. That might be the best. So then, uh, yeah, so just following normal drawing practice, the wall dimensions could have the uh, internal measurement and then the wall thickness, which again isn't shown on the drawing here. But when you start doing things like that, you might realise that it's easier to continue a dimension you've already drawn. So instead, if you go to the annotate panel, I'll just drag this out so you can see the buttons, you have a, um, well again, just I'll do linear dimension again. And I'll go from corner to corner. And then the linear is always going to be horizontal or vertical. So it doesn't matter if you choose diagonal points. It'll still give you the, the vertical measurement there. And so now, I could keep using linear, or I can go to uh, continue. Sorry, I've just got to... Yep, so you've got the continue button there. And now I can choose the next corner point, which is up here and then place the uh, final corner of the wall. So that just makes it easier when you're doing a row of dimensions. And I'll show you one other little option with dimension style. So you can see there that this text is now always horizontal. So you've got another setup in, again, dimension style. And you can keep adjusting your dimension style even after you've made your dimensions. Uh, so ISO standard is another one to, to try because that will use probably the best of both worlds. So it's going to make these aligned dimensions and the ones that are vertical rotate to follow the dimension line. But then the ones that are on a leader go horizontal. So that's a, uh, that's a good option. So now again I can just use linear to put an overall dimension, which on a drawing like this is pretty obvious. You can all, I'm sure, add up in your head um, that, that measurement and you'd know that it's 10,000, but it's still good practice to place it there. So as well as the, I'll uh, say not 10,000, I'll say 8,200. We're not adding an extra metre either side, just an extra 100 mil either side. So 8,200 overall, but it um, doesn't hurt to have that. And then the spacing for the tables, you don't need to dimension all the way along here, you need to dimension from the top. Uh, and that would be a good way to place that. So here, just again with linear, from the corner here to the desk, over to the left. And I want to line that up with the dimension I placed earlier, so I can always snap to that to line it up exactly. So again, I can now just use um, continue, which again on the annotate tab, you can easily choose and place in those others. And so very quickly, I'll just put in the uh, 
other direction dimensions. So notice each time I'm beginning with linear to set the first dimension and then from there I can just use continue to continue from that previous one. So again back to linear. There we go. And oh the uh, projector I've missed. So again, trying to get that away from everything else. So over here, I think should be okay. And then finally, the uh, the door should be dimensioned as well. So you do that by dimensioning from the corner of the wall, and then with continue dimension to the other side of the opening, not to the corner of the door jam but to the corner of the wall always and then if you really want to you could dimension to the other side of the wall that's something that you could work out using the dimensions that have already been done but uh, probably doesn't hurt to put that in so I've got all the dimensions I want now and then finally I don't need to put any notes really, but I'll just do some as an example because it's always helpful to have notes. So here I've got a notes text style. I'm just going to check that so you can see again I'm using this annotative option. So I'm going to encourage you to use that rather than multiplying your text types by your scale each time. So if you're going to use this uh, annotative uh, tick box option for either text or dimensions. It's fairly simple. You just need to give the height that you want your text to print. So this 2.5 here means 2.5 mil when it prints. And so I've done that. So I'll just close this. And then using annotative you always always have to choose your scale here as well. So there, 1 to 50 is my scale. It's already been chosen because I set that in the template, but you have to check that. So again, I'm just going to make sure I've got my layer. And uh, actually, I don't have a layer for text, so I will create that. Okay, so uh, now I can just draw some other single line or multi-line text and be sure that it'll turn out the right size. So I'll use multi-line text and put in what I want. So projector screen. And you can see how much more meaningful the drawing is. Once you've got this, all the labels done, it might seem obvious when you're the one drawing it, but to anyone else looking at it, it's not at all obvious. But then with a bit of description, it's clear to everyone. And once you've done one text and it's the right size, often it's easier just to copy that around like I'm doing here. Ah, now, there we want text maybe that's at an angle, just for something different. So there, it's often easier to use single line text. I'm just going to click a start point and then type 45 for the angle. And, uh, and just enter to finish. Left turn. Have I got the right spelling there? You are in. It's wrong to me. But, uh, it's right? Yeah, I think, yeah, yeah, so, uh, so I just can't help myself, I've got to get, 
E R N. Yep. Okay. So have a few. Yep. Yep. No. Right. Oh, I'll have a look at them in a minute. I'm just recording. So I'm yeah, yeah. Sure. Okay, so so that's got uh, enough really to set that up on the page. So the final thing now, if I go to the page there, you can see most of it's showing, but some of it's cut off. So the final thing there is to see the border of the viewport again. So I've got that layer hidden. So I'm just going to turn that back on and I can see then where the edge of my viewport is. And I'm going to click on the paper button. And then just with pen, bring it down as far as possible. Still not quite going to make it with everything I want. So that's okay. I can just bring it down a bit further go back to um, paper by clicking on the model button and back to paper space I can select this viewport border and bring it down and also stretch it up so that it's got a large area and now you can see everything fits just but it does fit Okay, so again, I'll use the, I'll turn that diff points layer off, or I might do it in a better way. I'm going to make a layer for that, which you really should do after a while. So, um, just call it uh, viewport, and set it to be a color that stands out. And then in the plot area, uh, you've got a little printer icon. You just set that to be non-printing there by clicking on that. You've got a little do not print. And so now I can put that and even... Oh, well, don't worry about the border of the title block. That's just showing from def points. But I can put this one onto viewport. So, you can still turn diff points off if you want to. That's what the title block's using. But then the um, viewport, you can leave on even if you want to. Because it's, remember, set to be non-printing. So I'll save that. Okay, so you probably want to save the file a bit more often than I am, but uh, it's not such a problem with AutoCAD anyway because it does automatically save. So I'm just checking the print preview there to show you that even though the title block, uh, sorry, the um, viewport border was showing, it won't show when you print. So that's okay, but then the very final thing would be to change the um, title block details, of course as necessary and I'm sure you can work this out so x size 3 and uh, so on and so 16 oh, too easy so, so that's done